Okay, y'all. Hello. <laughs> it is Achia here at Booking It with Achia, and today I bring you Promised Part 2 of my birthday book haul. I had a feeling that I would be buying books for my birthday weekend. My birthday was on February 23rd. I had a feeling, right? And the feeling was that I would be using my own money. Like, so I just thought that birth that part two was gonna be reasonable and small. <laughs> My boyfriend surprised me with a like full day shopping spree. So hence this big old bag and this bag is full. Like, yeah, big old bag full of books. Thank you to him. I also have some non-bookish items because we went to Lush and we also went to Newberry Comics, which I don't know if, I don't know where else they are. I know they're here at the Westchester Mall and they're in the Palisades Mall in West Nyack. And I'm sure they're all over the place, but Newberry Comics is a nerd's dream. So we went there as well. And I also have five books that I bought myself after I filmed the part one birthday book haul. And yeah, so I think we'll start with, should I start with what I bought myself? Probably, right? Not that I'm less excited about the things that I bought myself. Actually, no, that's a full lie. I am less excited about them because I bought them myself. Like, why would I not be more excited about the things that I was gifted? Why am I sitting here lying like that? But anyways, so we'll start with two books by the same author. I bought The Street by Anne Petrie, and I also bought The Narrows by Anne Petrie. I already owned this, right? And my lovely, lovely fur ball of a daughter knocked down a mason jar of water that was for my plants. Uh, and I woke up to my copy being completely soaked through and I just, I just rebought it. <laughs> it was not readable, so that's that. So this one is about a black woman in 1940s Harlem. She is just trying to grasp the American dream for her and her son. This is highly acclaimed. People laud it as one of the best novels, so I'm very excited about it. It is a black classic, and I also believe she was the first black woman to... Oh, there we go became the first novel by an African-American woman to sell more than a, a million copies. So yeah, I need to get onto this. And I love these versions of the cover. Covers, I should say, because they're all like this. This is about a black man who helps a woman. I don't know what's like happening to her, but it basically is midnight, it's dark, they can't see. He hears her scream, so he goes and he helps her. He brings her into this like bar or club or whatever. And everyone in the room gasped because they realized that he's a black man and she's a white woman. And I guess everyone in the, I don't know, but it says Link is a brilliant Dartmouth graduate, former athlete and soldier who, because of the lack of opportunities available to him, tends bar. Camillo is a wealthy married woman, dissatisfied and bored with her life of privilege. Thrown together by a chance encounter, both Link and Camillo secretly cross the town's racial divide, defying the social prejudices of their times. This, honestly, it was between this one and another of the novels, but this one sounded messier, and so I went with this one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm super excited for both of these. And then... I got, actually my mom bought me this, but this is See No Color by Shannon Gibney. We're reading this for my mom's book club, the Pen A Theme book club. And this one is about a black girl. She loves baseball, she wants to play. However, she's adopted. Both of her parents are white. Race, adoption, and identity collide in this award-winning debut novel about a teen challenging the life she's always known. So I will definitely be reading this during the month of March. It's pretty pretty short so yeah also this updated cover is so much better than the original then we have a volume of manga this is perfect world volume one this is about a man and a woman they reconnect i think do they start to work together i forget but they reconnect 
doing something with work and you realize that they went to high school together and it's them navigating their new budding relationship and he is in a wheelchair and I think in high school he didn't used to be in a wheelchair he was like this star athlete and it's her also navigating being in a relationship with someone who is wheelchair bound I am excited about this one I've not read volume one yet but it looked promising then we have a picture book that I have talked about before. I talked about this in one of my weekly wrap ups and that is Maya's Song by Renee Watson and illustrated by Brian Collier. And yeah, I mean, you can hear my full thoughts on this in that weekly wrap up. I forget which one it is. I'll put it someplace here, the thumbnail. And yeah, like I said, I wanted it in my personal collection. So when I saw that it was on sale. But yeah, those are the books that I bought myself. So now let's get into the stuff I was gifted. Like I, I picked it out, but I didn't pay for it. So it was a gift. We're gonna start with probably one of the things that I am the most excited about. This is the Rush bag. Um, and it has the Newberry comic stuff in it. Are you ready? I don't think you're ready. I wasn't ready, but I, I'm, here we go. <laughs> this is, what is on my lip? <laughs> this is the vinyl of the Renaissance album. I have wanted this since the album came out, which was 2022. Yeah, right? Because the album came out in 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, then the tour was 2023. But I've wanted this album for almost two years. Okay, a year and a half because the album came out in July. But yeah. It comes with like a lookbook and there's a poster in here and I'm just very, very excited. So I'm gonna put this right back in the box so I don't handle it too much. And then I also got a t-shirt from Newberry Comics. Ah! <laughs> and it is a Komi Can't Communicate t-shirt. One of my favorite manga and anime series. I really wanna know when we're getting a second season. I also got some manga from Newberry Comics, but I put that in that bag. So we'll jump to the Lush items. And by the way, this isn't sponsored. I wish it was. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be awesome? Like, Lush, you should sponsor me. Newberry Comics, Barnes & Noble, you should sponsor me, by the way, because I'm awesome. And I'm a genuine loyal customer. I've been using Lush's products since high school and for context I'm now 28. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm definitely a loyal customer. That's kind of wild now that I've said that. The fact that like I've been a loyal customer to some of these brands for over a decade. Yeah Apple I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you Apple. All right, so this tin is irrelevant. Like it's literally for bars. So yeah, we'll start with this one. This is the Oho Roma Water. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'll be honest, but this is a toner. It's a gentle hydrating rose and lavender toner that soothes the skin and calms the mind. I love me some, there we go. I love rose water and lavender, like separately. So the fact that this is them together, blew my mind. I was like, yes, please. Thank you. I will take that. I also got Dream Cream Body Lotion. This is soothe and moisturize even the most sensitive skin with this dreamy blend. This one I've tried before and I absolutely loved it. And then of course I ran out. Yeah, it's a very neutral smell. It doesn't really smell like much. I also got this. This one's new to me. This is called Sleepy Body Lotion. Um, this toner that I just showed you is also a new to me product. And the Sleepy Body Lotion says a luxuriously rich lavender and tonka lotion to soothe your skin and mind. No, you can't really see the purple with this lighting, but yeah, it's like a very, very light purple. Tonka bean is another scent that I absolutely adore. It's so good. This is, I forgot. <laughs> this is one of their moisturizing bars. Ooh, I really forgot. That's wild. Is the receipt anywhere? If you're someone who shops at Lush, you know how like all the soaps and bars and everything, they're not wrapped in any plastic. 
so like I have nothing to reference. Let me go on the website. Hold on. Wow, that's wild. I literally just spent five minutes trying to look up what this is, and I cannot find it. I don't think it's a massage bar. Maybe it is. It has bumps on the top. No clue what this is. I mean, I know what it's used for. It's um, one of those bars that you use after you have like cleansed in the shower and you use it and you don't have to moisturize once you get out. I just cannot remember which one this is. So that's great. It does smell a little bit like sleepy. No, no it doesn't. This one is a charcoal face cleanser. So like you just wet it and like, you know, it cleanses your face. I'm a big fan of activated charcoal, so I'm very excited to use this. And the last thing from Lush we have is just an old favorite of mine, and this is the Scrubby. And this is one of those shower ones where you don't need to lotion when you get out because you do it in the shower. So yeah, very, very excited for my new Lush goodies. I got a like sample size of their Charity Pot body lotion. Of course the camera cut off because I was talking too much, but so that's all that I got from Lush. Now to get into the books. And we'll start with the manga because I'm pretty sure that's on the top. So we have three volumes of Komi Can't Communicate. We have volume 16, volume 24, and volume 25. These were all five star volumes of Komi Can't Communicate for me. So hence why I'm adding them to my collection. I have a growing Komi Can't Communicate collection. I think out of all the manga where I have multiple volumes, Komi Can't Communicate is the series where I have the most. And I need to actually check because I'm pretty sure at this point I might as well just get all of them. And then I have volume three of Platinum End, another five star volume for me. And these are all series that I've talked about. Uh, this one is a contemporary series. This one is like a fantasy, a, well, it's like a dark urban fantasy series. The next one we have is Blood on the Tracks, volume one. Another one, five stars. Um, this one is horror. I don't want this video to be too long, hence why I'm not giving like full synopses and everything. Then we have volumes one and five of Haiku. And this is a contemporary series about a high school, boys high school volleyball team. Finished this, I think, last month. Yeah, and absolutely loved it. Highly recommend. I highly recommend all of these, actually, hence why I have physical copies. And I think that's it for manga, I think. Oh, nope. <laughs> There's three more in here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have Blue Period Volume 2, another five stars. This is a contemporary one about a boy who is, you know, finds out that he is good and loves art, so he decides to make a go at it. Then we have Volume 1 of Akane Bananshi, and this one is another contemporary one about a girl who decides to go into the art of Raguko, and after her father. And we have Volume 8 of Imakoi. There we go. Now I'm in Love. This is a contemporary romance one. Super cute. And yeah, that's now all the manga i'm going to regret putting those on the floor when it's time to take the thumbnail but oh well so let's move on to the novels we have the fetishist by katherine min this is one that i have started i got maybe like 23 pages and really enjoyed it it's supposed to be satirical funny about the fetish fetish fetishes about the ways in which white men fetishize fetishize the fetish white men have for asian women boom there we go Whew, that was hard and yeah so i saw a copy in barnes and noble and i was like you know what i will probably want to annotate you up so i got myself a physical copy then we have oh fat chance charlie vega by crystal maldonado i have actually read this one i listened to the audiobook loved it gave it five stars highly recommend why a contemporary about a fat puerto rican girl who's like i love my body and that's it but then she like kind of goes through a crisis when she realizes that the guy she has a crush on 
really wanted her for her best friend and that just sends her into a tailspin. And yeah, I'm glad that I have this on my shelf now. Next, we have The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I had already had, I've actually already started reading this, I already had a copy of The Color Purple, but the copy I had, the cover was ugly. I'm not even gonna sit here and lie to you, like that cover was ugly, I just, I couldn't get over it. I really couldn't get over it. So I gave it to my mom, she doesn't care about things like that, and I bought myself the cover that I always wanted, which is this one. I feel like I don't need to tell you what The Color Purple is about because, duh. Then we have Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame J. Brenya. This one I have been trying to read for a while. I checked it out from Libby, got to 40%, and then Libby said, Snatch! And that was months ago. And I saw that they not only had the hardcover in my Barnes & Noble, but also the paperback. And I was like, what? This will make it so easy to read. And this is a sci-fi dystopian futuristic United States that deals with the prison system. And it's like kind of gladiator Hunger Games style where you have prisoners who compete until the death to gain their freedom back. And I feel like that's just going to be really good. So I got myself a finished copy. Then, ooh, we have I Almost Forgot About You by Terry McMillan. Terry McMillan is one of those Black authors that has been around for a while and has been in my periphery for a while. But I was too young, I think, or I am too young to have like, how do I say this? This author, as well as James McBride and Eric Jerome, Eric, Eric Jerome Dickey have an extensive backlist, right? And they're kind of ascending to, if they're not already there, black classic status, right? And I guess because they've been around for so long, they don't get all the hype that they probably deserve, at least not in the younger book circles. And so I'm trying to make a concerted effort this year to read from Terry McMillan, Eric Jerome Dickey, and uh, I just said, oh, James McBride. And when I saw this in Barnes & Noble, I was like, oh, okay, let me see what this is about. And this is about a doctor. She makes some big changes. And, you know, it's a, a life story. It's one of those contemporary life stories about a black woman trying to figure it out. And maybe she falls in love. Maybe she doesn't. I don't know. But I'm excited for this. And also, I took out another, I took out another one of her books from the library. Is that a video I did? Is reading Terry McMillan's books a video I did? That might be a video project, y'all, where I read two of her books and see if I like her writing. Ah, oh, look at that. And then we have The Other Princess, a novel of Queen Victoria's goddaughter by Denny S. Bryce. This is the same author who wrote uh, Wild Women in the Blues, and the premise seemed really interesting, and I was like, Okay, cool, let's go, bet. Yeah, and it says, a stunning portrait of an African princess raised in Queen Victoria's court and adapting to life in Victorian England based on the real life story of a recently rediscovered historical figure, Sarah Forbes Bonetta. Say less. Then we have this really cute one that my partner saw and he thought that I would like it. And so he showed it to me and I was like, Yes. <laughs> and it says The Goodbye Cat. This is by Hiro Arikawa and translated by Philip Gabriel. And this is all about different cats. Yeah, this is like different stories of cats and how they essentially make our lives better. And it talks about life and death and grieving and family. And I just it hit me right here, right in the feels. It really did. Ooh, this is a graphic novel. Okay, this is Squire by Sarah Alfege and Nadia Shamas. I don't know much about this except that it is fantasy and it was on my radar. So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. I, I saw it across the room and I was like, okay, cool. And I guess this one I can read, read you the synopsis since we're close to the end. Born a second-class citizen, Isa has always dreamt of becoming a knight. It's the highest military honor in the once great Bayat Saji Empire. And as a member of the recently colonized Ornu people, it's her only way to full citizenship. 
now ravaged by famine and mounting tensions between the different provinces, Bayat Saji finds itself on the brink of war once again, and Isa can finally enlist in the competitive squire training program. It's not how she imagined, though. Hiding her or new status in order to better blend in, Isa must navigate new friendships, rivalries, and rigorous training under the merciless General Hendy. As the pressure mounts, Isa realizes that the greater good, Bite Zaji's military promises might not include her, and that the recruits might be in more danger than she ever imagined. She will have to choose loyalty to her heart and heritage, or loyalty to the Empire. So, I mean, do I need to say anymore? We have a book that's been on my radar and I've been wanting to add to my collection for a while, and that is Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Honestly, she's one of my favorite authors. I think I have all of her novels at this point and I've read I've read most of them. I think there's this one left as well as The Daughter of Dr. Moreau, and I can't remember if there's another one that I have and have yet read and have yet to read, but yeah, I mean, she's kind of, she's an author that just transcends genres. I have no clue what this is actually about. I think it has something to do with the Gilded Era of film, I think. Yep, talented sound editor, uh, dark thriller, film industry, and 90s Mexico City. Like, this one's a phenomenal writer, and that's, that's it. That's the synopsis that you need, and that's the only synopsis that I'm going to give you. And the last book in this book haul is part of that goal that I told you about before, and that is The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James Mc bride. I don't know much about this except the fact that every single person on booktube and on bookstagram that posts about this book raves about it. Like even people who don't usually read historical fiction have fallen in love with this book. So it seems like it's just no matter what you like, you'll probably like this, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that the way that it has come across to me. Not my battery dying, no. <laughs> Takes place in 1972. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently there's like a human skeleton that is discovered as some people are like digging for some home renovation. And honestly, I don't really want to know much. I just want to go into this. And this is another author where I'm like, I need to go back and just start reading his backlist because there's a reason that he's such an acclaimed author and yeah I'm really looking forward to this I'm looking forward to all these books honestly hence why I bought them thank you so much for watching this birthday book haul if you have not watched my birthday weekend vlog it actually it's gonna come out after this haul but make sure that you are subscribed and that you've hit the notification bell so you're notified when that video comes out. All of my socials are down below. The links to my Pango Book storefront as well as my Etsy shop are also in the description box. And I will see you in another video. Bye! Showing. I ain't living for the moment. I see what's mine and I want it. Hungry like a Pac-Man. Like Bruce Wayne a Batman. I'm Naruto with a Hanzo. Got a sharp mind like I'm my style. I'm copyrighting so it's all mine. Check it for me. I'm in the sky.